On November 3rd, 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 2, and a dog called Laika became Earth's first cosmonaut. The scientists knew Laika wouldn't return. After the mission failed, the government buried her painful death and fed everyone a fairy tale that cast her as a self-sacrificing hero. Laika was just another Moscow street dog, some of whom have learned to navigate the metro. Sadly, they are culled by the government and cruel people. Malchik got shanked by a supermodel with a kitchen knife. Now, commuters rub his nose for luck. He became a symbol of compassion. The saga of stray dogs in Russia is amazing. A year ago, I went to Moscow to research stray dogs for my creative capital project, a young adult sci-fi novel set in the Soviet Union. Work began last year when I became a father, and my performance practice developed into writing. The book, <laughs> the book is a retro-futuristic wonderland rooted in my love for performance and fa the fascinating poetics of human-animal relationships. Let me tell you this story illustrated in animation. It's 1953, Stalin is dead. Pushkin the dog wanders the cratered post-war landscape on a quest for love and a forever home. He is guided by his magic signs, oracular puzzles made of antlers and sticks that he constructs and decodes. A mysterious voice in the puzzles replays episodes from Pushkin's flawed memory. Pushkin travels with Dasha, a genius inventor and distributor of subversive contraband. Dasha's great power is running away. She drives a Zeiss 155 bus decked out like a rocket ship and screens bootleg films. They tour a bizarre performance called the universe is a totalitarian regime that lampoons state propaganda using science metaphors. They are hunted by sinister agents called cleanup men who suck up undesirables. They escape and hide out at the home of Baba Matinska, a famous female pilot. She shares her futuristic aircraft design and recounts her traumatic wartime past. Pushkin argues with a tangle of antlers that tells him that Dasha will never love him back. In a flurry of action, Dasha dies in a crash. The world becomes paper thin. Determined, Pushkin moves on to Moscow and makes his home in the metro. He constructs a memorial of Dasha in his mind and she talks to him. He performs for commuters in his little alcove and becomes a, a local celebrity. When a faction of dissidents takes advantage of Pushkin's visibility to start passing messages, cleanup men execute a raid. But an astrophysicist kidnaps Pushkin just in time. He is taken to a top secret facility where he undergoes rigorous training. Pushkin masters the sequences and systems put before him. He hopes that he will perform well enough and the astrophysicist will take him home. No such luck. His talents set him apart from the other dogs and he is sent on a mission to space. In zero gravity, Pushkin confronts the ultimate puzzle and the story ripples across time. Pushkin becomes his legacy. The tchotchkes, lunch pails, stamps, and matchboxes painted with his likeness. And there is much, much more. The book centers on some important questions like, after the dust settles, what do we do with the residue of trauma, the squashed tomatoes, the grief? What do we leave behind that says who we truly were, who loved us, and who we loved? It's about the stories behind the memorials and whether or not we can trust them. Now. The future. This project is more than a book. It's a seed for parallel works in other media, such as a graphic novel, a feature animation, kinetic sculptures, and multimedia performances. So there are three things that I need to move forward. One, I'm looking for an agent who can work with me to publish this young adult sci-fi novel with the option to transmute it into an illustrated children's book. Familiarity with transmedia artwork and other publishing formats is a major plus. Two, I conceived and wrote the first draft during eight months of baby naps. <laughs> I need much larger chunks of time to finish the second draft. <laughs> Next year, I would like to attend a family-friendly artist residency anywhere in the world, and we want to bring the dog. <laughs> Three, I'd like to return to Moscow to conduct more primary research and collect images and video. To conclude, our interdependent relationships with animals is complex. We bond with them, we use their bodies, we objectify them, we eat them, we sleep with them. Watching my toddler interact with my dog and my cat is deep. <laughs> Communication without words. It reminds me that embodying other emotional and cognitive perspectives cultivates empathy. 
I see the story of Pushkin the dog as a contribution to that end. Thank you for Creative Capital and all the support.